The time is now. I hope everyone has had a blessed week, but you already know what it is. We're here once again going in, say it with me, Talking the Truth Thursday. One more time, Talking the Truth Thursday. Let's get it. Okay, so today we're picking up a new topic, and that topic is called Blind Trust in God. Blind Trust in God. See, in order for us to change the game, we have to be willing to walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith. Not by sight. Because what we think we might see could only hinder us from doing the will of God because God operates outside of the ordinary. He doesn't operate the way we operate. He doesn't work the way the world works. He operates outside of the ordinary. He will take the most unlikely person to do the greatest things. The most unlikely person to change the game. And what we're going to do over the next few weeks, we're going to dig into some very familiar passages but we're pulling out information that is oftentimes overlooked, but it's so important to us if we plan to change the game. And the very first text we're going to is Acts chapter 9. Paul's road to Damascus. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Blind trust in God. Let's dive in. Okay, so we know that Paul was a mass murderer of Christians. He was a mass murderer of Christ followers. And if you really want to be honest, we can also say that Paul was some type of terrorist because he purposely picked out a group of people. He purposely picked out a group of people because of what they believed or who they followed. They were Christ followers and he imprisoned them or he executed them. He was a persecutor of Christians. And this day seemed like it was going to be like any other day in Paul's life. It didn't seem like this day would be any different than any other day in his life. Because he was on his way to Damascus to continue doing what he's been doing. Persecute Christ followers. But once he gets on the road to Damascus, once he's on his way there, the Bible says he's hit with a light. The light dazed him, knocked him off his beast, and knocked him to the ground. Here's a side note for you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your race is. Black, green, red, orange, white. It doesn't matter what your race is, who you are. You can even be a persecutor of Christians. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Paul is not a Christ follower. He's a persecutor of Christ followers. But now he's on the ground and here's the question he asks. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? He is now declaring him, Lord. Paul is on the ground. Declaring him Lord because every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who are you, Lord? But, but Jesus' response was, I'm Jesus, whom you persecute. Get up, go into the city, and wait there until I tell you what's next to do. And Paul, once he gets from, up from the ground, he opens his eyes. And realizes that he's blind. So the men that are there with them have to lead him into the city. Now you would think that after being able to see one moment and being blind the next. That just becoming blind out of nowhere he would tread back. He would track back and head back home. But he allows his men to lead him into the city where Jesus told him to go. This is the first look. At blind trust in God in the text. But a lot of times it's overlooked. This is the first look at blind trust in God in the text. Because Paul had no idea what would happen to him once he got to Damascus. I mean when he was on his way there he ended up blind. So who knows what would happen to me when I, when I get to Damascus. But he blindly trusted God and did not order his men to lead him back home. He ordered them or he, he, he let them lead him into the city where Jesus told him to go. And we each, each and every one of us will experience a point in our life where we feel blind. Not so much in the physical, but we will all come to a day where we feel like I don't know what to do. I don't know what my next move should be. I don't know what my next step should be. Well, understand this. You don't need to see him to hear his voice. 
You do not need to see him to hear his voice. Paul didn't see him, but he heard his voice and he followed the instructions. And I'm sure we've all been going somewhere or headed somewhere. And we heard that still small voice telling us, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Uh, that's not a good idea. I wouldn't go there if I was you. I would not do that if I was you. Because you don't need to see him to hear his voice. Paul was physically blind. He was physically blind, but he heard his voice. So what that tells us is that he sees him without seeing him. <laughs> I'll say it again. He sees him without seeing him. Let's lock in. Let's lock in. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things unseen. See, you do not need to see him to know that he's there. Paul was physically blind. He could not see him. But the evidence pointed to the fact that the presence of the Lord was there. And what Paul hoped for was for him to restore his sight. So he did not order his men to take him back home. He allowed them to lead him to the place Jesus told him to go. And once he gets there, he fully commits. He fully commits. Because Jesus said, go into the city and wait until I tell you what's next to do. And Paul waited. And after three days of not eating, of not drinking, his sight is restored and he's baptized. Okay. So his sight is restored. That's physical. Then he's baptized. That's spiritual. So Paul was blind physically and spiritually. But it did not matter how you look at him being blind. He put his blind trust in God and God used him to change the game. Paul changed the game. He is now considered to be the greatest apostle in the New Testament. He is considered to be the greatest apostle in the New Testament. But do you think Paul thought that all of this would happen once he got to Damascus. See, you may not know what steps to take, but trust me, God will order your steps. You may not understand the plan, but trust me, his plan is a good plan. The Bible says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men all that God has planned for you. And do you think Paul thought that this would happen? Do you think he would end up writing almost the entire New Testament? Do you think he would have end up taking the, the gospel to new heights? Taking the gospel to the Gentiles? But it all started with blind, trusting God. Not walking by sight, but walking by faith. And when you put your blind trust in God, you see all the accomplishments Paul did. He planted churches all over Asia Minor. He took the gospel to new heights. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. But when you put your blind trust in God, the Bible says, greater things shall you do. Game changers. Let's walk by faith and not by sight.